What is up guys, my name is Jackal. We're here for Soul Blazer, which also means we're here to talk about BoJack Horseman and a special episode at that because this is the season finale that we're talking about. Yes, I want to continue. So last week, seven days ago, I did a... Uh, I think this was the one, right? All right. I don't know if there's anybody that I need to talk to, but we're just going to go straight into the action. Um, I'll, ha I'll still have another area to come to, so I'll, I'll talk to everybody I need to talk to. I know I talked to a few. I don't know if I talked to everyone. But season four, what a season it has been. Honestly, of all the seasons that I've watched so far, this one's probably gone the quickest as far as like how it's felt. A lot of the other episodes have, or a lot of the other seasons felt like they, uh, not that they overstayed their welcome because they definitely did not do any such thing. But this one felt like it flew by. And one of the things I think that gave it that benefit is the fact that Bojack was still the main character. But overall, he was much more sparingly used for a main character. Which I think is great, and I think has given the show an amount of variety that, because of the way that the show is set up, I think does its format a lot of justice. And this season was... It's not that I didn't notice it, but, you know, when you see it... Oh, God, these things again. But when you're watching it all at once, you really notice, like, this season, more than any other, is about... All memes aside, it's about family. This episode, more than... Or, this season more than any other is about family. Especially with regards to, I would say, the main two yin and yangs of this, which is Bojack and Princess Carolyn. One character who's, you know, both characters who've remained childless, but one who, you know, from the very first moment we met him, was very much against the idea of having kids. And the other, being Princess Carolyn, who very much wants to have a family. And has almost been pursuing that in some way, shape, or form. Whether that's like her main drive or like a secondary or tertiary goal. Her having a family and the relevance of it regarding her age is always a topic of conversation somewhere. And this season was much more in the upfront. I mean... We'll start with Princess Carolyn. This season starts off with her having a miscarriage. Her and Ralph had gotten pregnant while they were clearly just fucking a boot. And she got preggers and had a miscarriage. So right away that happens. Which should set kind of the tone of what's going to be going on throughout the entirety of the season. Oh, God damn it. I hit it with, like, barely my pinky. <coughs> alright, alright, you fucker. Make me slay all these urchins again for no reason. Literal urchins. But, you know, that's how we start off, and that's how we end up with Princess Carolyn. Which, or not end up, because that's how that happens maybe 10 episodes in. So maybe not end up. Oh, I forgot to talk to the... You know what? Watch this now. Actually, this may have been slower than just to walk back. Maybe this was slower. Maybe my math was off. But, you know, that's where we see Princess Carolyn both... She hits that low point 
twice throughout the season. Once kind of mistakenly at the beginning. And then the next time when her and Ralph had been trying to get her pregnant. And it's a much more devastating thing towards the end. And with Princess Carolyn, a big problem that she seems to have is that she's fucking stubborn. She has it in her head that because her mother gave birth to nine kids, that for some reason that means that she also needs to be able to do the same thing for really no reason. She's never explained why she needs to be able to do it. She just says her mother could, so she can, and that's it. But we all know that that's just not how bodies, I was going to say human bodies, but we all know that Princess Carolyn is anthropomorphic, but for all intents and purposes, we all know that that's not how the human body works. Just because one of your parents had nine kids doesn't mean just innately you should be able to have nine kids and that's end of story. That's not how that's going to work. And, you know, Princess Car- Okay, okay, okay. You... Alright. I'm stuck, I'm stuck. I didn't realize I was stuck on Coral. Alright. That went much better the first time I did it. Way better the first time I did it. Fucking killed Steve Irwin. Now you're trying to kill me. Might as well kill these things again. But luckily towards the end of the season, you know, Princess Carolyn kind of comes to ter- kind of comes to terms with the fact that she's she might not be able to have kids in the way that she wants to have it in the way that she envis- envisions that she should be able to because oh jesus all right all right all right i don't know what i thought was going to happen and what ended up happening was like the most logical thing to happen. But still. Kind of spooked me to run across that water and get flung off. Hey, fishy. It kind of sucks, though, to watch that Princess Carolyn kind of had to fall through like a bit of a Bojack trap in that. She um, she kind of ha- had to have a little crash at the end of the season. You know, she wasn't able... Like, she lost the baby. And right after, she pushed Judah away. For, I mean, was Princess Carolyn right to feel like Judah had betrayed her by um, speaking on behalf of the company instead of Princess Carolyn? Yeah. But... You know, a character like Judah has shown absolutely nothing but, like, loyalty in that regard. So I think a little bit of leniency could have been afforded to him. But at the same time, he was, or she was in a very fragile state. You know, she had just lost the baby. Wait. Did she... She broke up with Ralph and then fired Judah, if I'm correct. Maybe? Fuck, now I can't remember. It's been a week since I watched it. Even though I ended up watching that episode to what amounts to total, like, four times, I still get lost in small details like that. But, you know, regardless of which one she fired first, at this point she's letting go of all of her assets, all of the people who are closest to her. You know, she was going through all of these different things, and she had the lie of her family with the necklace of hers, which 
for me, I don't really feel like nostalgia like that for objects. So like, I get it in context of the day. I understand everything, but like, that's one minute thing that I just can't really grasp. It's like, who gives a fuck if your necklace was like fake? Like it wasn't like real gold or whatever. It wasn't a real thing from the old country. It would matter more that my parent had given it to me than any of that shit. But in context of everything going on and how much, you know, PC has kind of identified herself with being from this hard line of, you know, cats that came from the old country. to the new, I understand why she's grasped so much onto these things. Especially when she lives a job that we've seen in other seasons isn't the most personally fulfilling. So her attaching herself to these other things makes sense. But you know, it sucks to watch her go through all this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I thought that was for the the little fucking demon rocks. Fuck you. Alright, get rid of these guys. Oh, there's another one? There he is. There he is. I found him. Oh, that's... Really dope. I didn't think that was going to happen. But, you know, Princess Carolyn went through a lot this season. She struggled to really have a family, the family that she's always wanted. But, as the season comes to a close, I'm glad that, you know, of all people, Bojack. Because, other than um, Rabidowitz, who... I think was kind of missing what was going on in the situation. Rabidowitz has been the only person to ever say that, like, you know, oh, you'd be, it's a good thing you're not a mom. You would be terrible at it. Everybody else has told Princess Carolyn that she would be a wonderful mother. You know, Judah, who, you know, that motherfucker just don't lie. It's like, I mean, the dude's very clearly some version of, like, high-functioning autistic. And, you know, <coughs> he just, he, he doesn't lie. Ooh. Ooh. That's not cool. I mean, I'm not going to lose my... Oh, Yes. Oh, right on cue. Oh, my goodness. All right, that's a punch I'll take. But, you know, Judah, who doesn't lie, said that she would be a great mother. Um, Ralph told her that she would be a great mother, and he was the one that was trying to actually impregnate her. So his opinion, obviously, in this regard, means the most. And then Bojack also told her that she would be a great mother. Somebody who, the, you know, we follow his story, so we know his sordid history with mothers. You know, she's basically been assured on all accounts what a great mother that she would be. And I'm glad to close everything out that he asked her. You know, hey, have you ever considered adopting? You know, you'd be a great mother. And I'm glad that she actually said, I've been considering it more and more. Fuck. All right, 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 all right. Go this way. What are these gold fucking things? All right, very clearly... The monuments on this island are lightning pyramids. If you wear the thunder ring and touch them, the master will send down lightning to destroy the monsters. 
All right, well, I'm going to guess if I... And to guess the structure of this game and how everything's gone so far, it is going to be t with somebody that I talked to. So real quick, we're going to reload on some shmanas. Our new dealer has to fucking hurry up on the quicks. I know it's not their fault, but old boy that they get from is at a music festival and he comes back. Well, I guess technically today, but you know, tomorrow, quote unquote, if we're considering it Saturday night for me and not Sunday morning. Um, but he's at a music festival and he's coming back later on during the Sunday. So hopefully I get some trees soon. So I don't have to borrow some from the roommates. But, um, let me just smack this real quick. Too much thumb movement. Couldn't do it. <laughs> Ah, there we go. Feel wonderful. So we'll just walk around and talk uh, about this before we talk to all the people we got to talk to, because that's going to be a bunch. But, you know, she's been told that she would be a great mother. And I'm glad towards the end that she's considering adopting. I hope she gets back with Ralph. I hope she gets Judah back as a business partner. And I hope she adopts because unfortunately at her age, you know, you know, I mean, that's what me and my girlfriend, you know, well, one of my girlfriends, uh, what we had to deal with. Cause our girlfriend is only six months older than me. So, you know, she just turned 32 I'll be 32 later on this year. <clears throat> so me and her know that our timetable is different. You know, my main girlfriend, she's 40 now. She's, you know, eight and a half years older than I am. So, you know, we had to decide, you know, are we going to get married first? Or are we going to have a kid? Because, you know, I don't give a fuck about marriage, but she does. And also there are some legal benefits to it. So, you know, it's whatever. I understand. And, you know, just looking realistically at the time, it was like, all right, well, you know, at the time it's like, you're 39. Marriage doesn't really have a strict age thing, but, um, having kids does. So, you know, that was the option that we went with. You know, we decided that was more important, um, to have another, to have one more kid, especially for her. At her age. Especially because at the time, you know, we didn't know if our relationship with our girlfriend is gonna was going to be long term. So there's a very good chance that this could have been my only blood child. So, you know, that one was a more pressing issue. So just having to have done this mathematics in my own head, in my own relationship, I understand the calculus Princess Carolyn has to go through. You know, even though it wasn't my body, I just from having to have these discussions, I get it and I understand the urgency and I know. Unfortunately, PC has already said she's had five miscarriages. Unfortunately, she it may just be up to adoption at this point. And the thing is, is that, you know, just and. This is easy for me to say, because when I got with my girl, her son had just turned two, the younger one. The older one was um, 11 or something like that. He just turned like 11. He was older and he had a relationship with his dad, much different relationship with them. But 
as far as the younger one, he was already two years old. So, um, where was I going to bring this to? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He was two years old. So, I had to learn, especially because his father wasn't involved, I learned how to become a father figure to a child that wasn't mine. And, again, because of my girlfriend's age, there was a chance at earlier in our relationship that her son would have been my only kid. A kid that I have no blood relation to. But I myself was raised by somebody who I have no blood relation to. So I was in a, un- a unique position to approach being a father to someone who's not of my blood in a very detached and realistic way where I know a lot of people aren't as willing to do that. Especially someone like Princess Carolyn who very clearly viewed for some reason her not ability to be a mother with her identity but her ability to bear children. And I'm glad that, you know, even though we haven't gotten a lot of the internal processes of Princess Carolyn, and if she were the main character, I feel like we would, but I'm at least very glad that towards the end, she's at least starting to consider it, meaning she's starting to view it from that mindset that her adopting a child wouldn't affect her ability to be a mother In the way that she wants to be. Maybe not in the way that she thinks she wants to be. But as somebody who has been a step parent before being a parent to both kids. Like now my son is my son. He's not my stepson. If I had to be technical, of course I would call him my stepson in the most technical. But he's my son. Like nowhere else does any... does. I go to his daycare, you know, hey, your dad's here. That Nobody says, your stepdad's here. Like, he's my kid. But at first, I didn't have that relationship. And there was a chance when we started getting together that his father might have been more involved. He didn't because he's a piece of shit, but that's for a different time. He... Because he's not involved, I had to learn how to do both. To transfer from one to the other. So because I understand it, what it's like to be a step-parent. And what it's like to be a parent to someone who's not your own. I get why some people don't find it to be ideal outright. It's just a matter of letting go of that. That the idea of you bearing the child yourself with your own DNA actually means anything. And again, because I was raised by somebody who wasn't my blood father, that helps me see it in that light. So, you know, that's Princess Carolyn. Alright. Um, before we start talking to everyone... Um, shit. We'll talk about Todd. Todd doesn't have a lot to say about this season other than, you know, he explored his asexuality, which was revealed towards the end of last season and made more a front of his character in this season. And I I just, I like the way that it's developed. You know, he's just kind of exploring it. Clearly, you know, towards the end of the season, we see that and from seeing and talking to other asexual people within the show, within, you know, the, the people within the show, you know what I mean? He's learning that, you know, being asexual doesn't mean he has to be aromantic. And he clearly seems like a kind of person who wants to be romantic. So I like Todd opening up on his sexuality a bit, getting to the point at the end where now he's going to go out on a date with that what are those animals called? Axolotls. But that axolotl girl, um, they're going to get together. So at very least, 
you you have him being able to explore his romantic side, you know, within his asexuality. So I'm glad to see where that's going to go. And on the quick note, because Tom ha- Todd hasn't had a lot this season, but I predict he will start to have more in the upcoming seasons. I like that he is starting to be more of a person. And that's great. And by person, I mean like a character. Not just the dude who does the side plots for comic relief. I mean an actual character within the show. And, you know, it culminated with the last episode and him. I I, I talked about this in the last video I made about BoJack. You know, the last Soul Blazer video. I had talked about him basically, quote, turning Super Saiyan within his universe. And that was him telling Princess Carolyn, get your shit together. Like, when Todd is the character telling you to get your shit together, that means something for him as a character. You know, he's no longer just a guy, like, yeah, he's still living in people's houses and da-da-da, but he's no longer just that. Now he's actively involving himself in not just Bojack and his trajectory with what he tells him and how he needs to be better, but also with Princess Carolyn. And at very least, being someone who helped her in the moment start to see where she needs to go to move forward. And that's great to me. I love that. I love seeing Todd develop into his own character. And I remember saying at the start of the show that, you know, it always had four main characters. Bojack, Princess Carolyn, Mr. Peanut Butter, and Diane Nguyen. Those four were the main characters. I think Todd has officially, if they carry him on the way that they have, which the way this show is and the quality it's been, I don't doubt that they will. I think Todd has now elevated himself to the fifth member of that cast. Truly and fully, he has made it from a four-piece to a five-piece. He was municipal, they were municipal waste before um, Slime and Punishment. They are municipal waste now after Slime and Punishment. And obviously for any non-metalhead that hears that, <coughs> Municipal Waste is a thrash metal band that originally was a four-piece, and eventually, after two releases ago, they became a five-piece. So, therein lies my joke. Ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. Or not a joke, comparison. Whatever, I'm kind of drunk. Leave me alone. Alright, let's talk to some folk. And then we'll talk about Bojack and Princess Carolyn and, uh, or not Princess Carolyn, Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter. (coughs) I didn't know the world underwater looked different from the world above. Perspective change, eh? You're just going to tell me, yeah, you have orders not to let anyone pass. Okay. Oh God, demon, dolphin! Look at his eyes. Look at him. Ooh. Hello, I have some medical herbs made for. Fuck yeah, I do. Yeah. Fuck yeah. All right. That solves a big problem right there. The coral reef hides many dangerous monsters. Make sure to use magic there. Okay. This used to be the queen's palace. I am the queen's maid. Thank you. I saw the queen when I was dreaming. She looked very sad. It was somewhere near a sunken ship. Please save the queen. God save the queen. My name is Nana. I am one of the dancers. Thank you very much. Three of my students came back. I was going to show you our dance. I think it will be more fun if you join us.
I keep moving over a little bit. Do I get anything for doing this? Alright, I don't think they do anything. Hopefully not. I'm the best jumper, I'll show you. Yo! That's pretty dope, actually. Do it again! Servas is the name of my friend the dolphin. Cool. So all you're gonna tell me is just the name of have you seen the Queen of the Mermaids? No. This is the secret. The Queen looks like this. She always sits like this. She looks so... She looks so mean! What's in here? Ooh, sleeping dolphin. Cool. My name is Lou. I used to live with the inventor, Dr. Leo. The blues that I have seen from him is a strange jewel. It attracts anyone who looks at it and changes their person. Give it to me. So it's the Triforce. Okay. One day the queen found the jewel and took it. Then she placed me in prison. Oh. So now the queen has it. Cool. I got the Thunder Ring though. You told me many things about the queen. I don't think she was a bad person. She was just attracted to the jewel. Sweet. Unfortunately, in the short term... Oh, wait, no. It doesn't really matter why. I used to live here. I am trying to remember something, but I cannot. When I close my eyes, I see something like a ball shiny and black. Wait, no, no. Urgh. Wait, do I have anything? A small, shiny black ball? I do not. Hmm. I will have to figure that out in due time. How did you get here? Oh, you're really not going to let me through, are you? Boo. Alright, so a black stone of some sort. Stand on my nose. Oh, shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. Push me. Push me, daddy. Wait. Is that what I mean? It's not black, but... It's something. Let's see if this is what old boy wants. Go into his dreams, Morty. There it is. That's probably what I was looking for. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Move, fuck out my way. I will give you the magic flare. Magic flare is useful against monsters that fly and have large amounts of hit points. Alright, I don't really know what that does. Alright, cool. I think I, uh, I think I talked to everyone. Jesus Christ, 35 minutes. 
This is going to be a long in, folks. This is going to be a long in. And I still think there's... Oh, I got healed. Oh, there we go. There's the mention of that. All right, we have saved. Let's save for real. All right, so we've talked about everyone. Now we got... Who are we going to start with? I guess we'll start with titular character, and we'll finish off with the one that I think was most prevalent. No, I think they were actually 50-50. Um, I think it was just the focus at first. But... We'll go with... We'll go... Nah, you know what? We'll save the titular character for last, as it's supposed to be. So... Mr. Peanut Butter and Diane, their relationship went through a whole bunch of ups and downs. And this season, to be totally honest, though Diane, not the perfect spouse, not the, the best partner at times, I think a lot of this season was pinned on Mr. Peanut Butter's behavior on putting strain within their relationship. Everything he did regarding politics was pretty much done on a whim without his wife's, I don't want to say consent or permission, but like, I don't necessarily think that you, sh you know, a partner should control what you do as far as your career goes, but they should at least be involved somewhat with the grand plot. Of what's going on with you. You shouldn't be making moves. To be the governor of your state. Without really seeing what's up with your partner. And seeing if. That's cool with them that you're doing that. No it's not here. I didn't think it was going to be there. Where is... We'll have to find where that... Uh, what's it called? Where the Dolphin Pearl released an area to later. One that I'm not going to be able to fuck with. Oh shit. That's cool. I like that effect. That's really cool. But, you know, Mr. Peanut Butter did a lot of shit this season that was really just out of pocket. And again, Diane's way of handling her responses to it were not always healthy. They were definitely not. You know, her just releasing articles going against her husband, you know... I'm not sure how detailed they went into going against his character, but, you know, kind of bogus on her part. But a lot of this stemming from the way that he was behaving. Okay... Can I do anything with him, though? Hmm. Why can I not? Hmm. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm fucking dumb. No, no, 
No! Fuck it, I can go see where that dolphin opened something. Damn it. I'm dumber than shit. But, you know, I think a lot of this season was done by Mr. Peanut Butter's hand. And, you know, you saw them this episode after, you know, everything that had gone on with Diane kind of, you know, not kind of, basically abandoning Mr. Peanut Butter and, you know, camping out at Bojack's house for months. You know, Diane has done her fair share of shit. But the frivolousness with which Mr. Peanut Butter handles his life is really, like, awe-inspiring sometimes. And, I mean, all of it culminated in the very last decision he made in the season where, you know, Diane was talking about her dream room from when she was a kid. Her bell room, as she called it. I remember hearing this story when I first watched the episode. And right away I had thought to myself, Mr. Peanut Butter is going to fuck this up. And he did. And he did it in the way that I knew he was going to. Which was going to be to give her the actual physical room. Which... I mean, fuck, man. I knew she wasn't going to want. Wait. Was that over there, though? Was that where the dolphin opened up something? Ooh. Bummer. I will figure out where you have opened a thing. But, you know... When when Diane was talking about the bell room, I knew that this was something... Just because I kind of identify with the kind of person that Diane is... I know what she's talking about when she's talking about something being that was just something for, like, her and her imagination. Not something that needed to be recreated in life. And I do at least appreciate how Diane was able to... Come... Come, my pretties, come. Yeah! Such an easy solution to a fucking problem. And there it is. Yep. And there that one is. Such an easier solution to all the bullshit I was doing. Alright, I don't think I need you anymore for the time being. Yeah, but I don't need it now. Thank you. Go back. And, you know... It's weird because when I see a lot of people talk about when I look back at how people were reacting to Diane's behavior back then, a lot of people I see are just like, oh man, what the fuck is wrong with Diane? And honestly, though I get, depending on your personality type, I understand, but at the same time, I don't know, these guys have, I've said this before, these guys have had to have been together for close to a decade at this point. And Mr. Peanut Butter is still doing all these big, huge-ass gestures that Diane has never been a fan of since the moment we've met her character. 
ever. And, you know, if this is your wife, I mean, eventually, dog, you got to wonder, like, how many times are you going to keep making this mistake? Because at very least, when it comes to this one singular regard, as far as accepting the other person for who they are and trying to go with it, Diane has rolled with the ball quite a bit, especially this season. She definitely displayed her disagreements and her dislikes for things, but ultimately she went along with all of the shit that Mr. Peanut Butters wanted to do. And... Oh, fuck, ow. Eventually, you know, when are you going to expect your spouse to get it right, I guess, is the thing. Yeah, but I don't know where that released something. Son of a bitch. I cannot seem to find said area anywhere. Very frustrating. And then I'll talk to that other statue and then close out with Bojack and we'll be done. Because this episode's uh, pretty long. Pretty long. Nah, maybe I gotta go... I gotta open the next one. I've, I've went all here. I've went all these places. But, you know... I predicted that their marriage was gonna end this season. And though I may have been a little hasty... I think it's going to happen... I don't want to say the next season and be wrong again. But at very least, by the end of the show, I don't think they'll be together. I feel pretty confident in saying that their relationship is pretty much crumbling at this point. And, you know, Diane's not innocent either in her conduct and the way that she handles things. You know, Mr. Peanut Butter is right to feel the way that he does in wanting to give his own wife the kind of home that he thinks that she should have. But at the same time, you know, he doesn't get to treat his wife, current wife, differently or in a certain way because of the conduct of his ex-wives. That's not fair to his current wife. So, you know, it really sucks. You know, they had a fun little B-plot the whole season with Mr. Peanut Butter, you know, going for governor and then helping Woodchuck beat his, um, both of his ex-wives, but, you know, ultimately, the downfall of their marriage is just that they're two different people. Mr. Peanut Butter is a very grand, very extravagant kind of person, and Diane just isn't, and the way that they express themselves is just different, and their ways of being are just not compatible, it seems, and, you know, Maybe there's a time in the future where they could be better for each other. But, you know, that's that's not always how things go. Ghost ship. Ghost ship. Rut row. I don't want to go to a ghost ship. That sounds fucking ass. Sounds booty cheeks. But you know what? We'll 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 get, we'll get there. We'll try to cut ourselves into a good chunk of this ghost ship, and go from there. But um, yeah, I guess I'll be interested to see how their relationship is going to end up going. Cool. Walk into my sword. I love it. But last off, titular character, Bojack Horseman. With him, we saw a lot of um, 
the same, not the same thing, but a same direction of family being the central focus of his season, but not so much him starting one, more so him recovering from one. Obviously, that being, you know, the family dealing with his mother, his father, the toxic relationship that he was born out of. And you see him struggle the whole season with, you know, him having a mother who now has dementia. So he's being forced to take care of the same person who's like the object of his trauma at a stage where he has not, he doesn't seem to have recovered from his trauma himself. So it ends up being this really weird fucking thing where he just ends up acting out in really like awful and vindictive ways that are really unnecessary. But, you know, the cartooniness aside, you can understand just because of, just because of that. He's the, he's been abused by his mother. And now before he's gotten to reconcile his own ways with that, he's having to take care of her. It's not a relationship for a healthy, non-toxic relationship. And their relationship is exactly that unhealthy and toxic the whole season mainly on Bojack's behalf but in an understandable way that's still not good but again it's understandable like you know it sucks you know you want him to be better you need to fucking get over here fucking flying away over here asshole Wait, oh, is this a boss? Is this what we're doing? Well, then it's definitely a good thing we're almost done. But, you know, at the same time of Bojack having to do all this, we also see him being the healthiest he's ever been in taking care of his sister, who, throughout the season, he thinks is his daughter. And I have a feeling and a fear that without her in his life I have a very strong feeling that he's going to relapse into a lot of his old behaviors again and I feel like that's going to be terrifying the prospect of what that's going to do but at the same time you know that's just kind of life like He's gone through times throughout the show where he's been, okay, okay, where he's been really toxic and other times where he's been, you know, not so bad. And this season, oh shit. Emblem D? Is that one of those? Oh, dope. Boo, you really gave me a nothing inside? What a cock. Fucking hate you. Alright, cool. Then we'll be able to save and leave it off for uh, the boss fight for next week. Hell's yeah. But you know this... It was nice to see Bojack attempt to be at his best. And... Other than, you know, just kind of still being an asshole. It was nice to see him trying throughout the whole season. And to see that when Hollyhock, you know... One of the biggest and best things that Bojack said this season. And it was a very small detail that I noticed because of the nature of the way that I've been watching this show. And that is when... Bojack was on the last episode trying to call Hollyhock and one of her dads answered. And Bojack was trying to say, you know, my 
my dementia-ridden mother was giving her amphetamines, like weight loss pills, in her drink without her knowing. That's what she happened. I just want you to know it's not Hollyhock's fault. And that's not an exact quote, but that's the feeling he's giving off. And this has been one of the actual... Um, I would say one of the best things, the healthiest things that Bojack has done since when I start the game back up, it's going to start me back up there, but at least I can listen to some peaceful music to close this out. But, you know, it was nice to see Bojack being a healthier version of himself or attempting to be and watch the remorse he went through when he realized why Holly Hawk had to go to the hospital. And actually noticing after it came up how Hollyhock was indeed a little bit heavier set at the beginning of the season than at the end. Fucking excellent details on the show creator parts. You know, the animators and the, you know, whoever's in charge of the visual storytelling like that. Excellent details. Not just making it, you know, a topic of the season but an actual visual thing that you can see happening to her i don't know how gradual it was looking back but you know i noticed from the beginning to the end and it was an excellent detail you know a haunting one but a good one nonetheless and you know i think Actually, you know what? I don't I don't know if that's a better thing that he's done or before that when um that might be tied. Or maybe this moment's actually more healthy of Bojack. All the resentment he's held up against his mother and he's told Hollyhock, you know, I want my mom to recognize me so I can get down on one knee and tell her, fuck you. And at the end of everything, at the end of, you know, who he thought was his daughter overdosing at the time, his mother finally recognizes him and starts to kind of panic because she has dementia, looking around and being in a nurse at a nursing home, a new one, because she got kicked out of her old one. Bojack had a chance to lay into her. And instead, he chose that moment to comfort her and give her a positive image about where she was at. And, you know, we'll see how long this lasts for with Bojack because it's never lasted forever. But for what it's worth, I think it was beautiful to see. And I think it really showed why, even though he's Bojack has done shitty things throughout the show it also showcases a lot of the reasons why you as an audience are meant to sympathize with him because of moments like that and it doesn't negate the things that he's done it doesn't make the bad things that he's done go away but you know when you're making a tv show you can understand this is why you empathize with him because he's human and you understand the journey that he's made more so than just a random character, a random person in your life. You know, you know more about this character in this show than you might know about some of your, the people you work with, their lives. But there's a good chance that the people all around you have stories that are at very least adjacent to this one. So, you know, It's a lot, man. This is such a fantastic show. Such a great season. And, um, you know, I mean, I guess right now it's Sunday morning. So in a little bit more than 24 hours, I will start up season five. And I'm ready for it. And this was a great season and a great show. And I'm glad I watched it. And uh, till next time, guys.